106.7 weather. Here's your KQNK forecast. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times today, with daytime highs approaching 88. Winds out of the southwest, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows level off around 44. A mix of clouds and sun tomorrow, daytime highs approaching 89. Mainly clear Friday, with daytime highs approaching 83. 81 Saturday. From the Weatherology Weather Center, I'm staff meteorologist Laura Lockwood. Currently 44. Kansas Information Network News. I'm Jen Austin. One person was killed after being hit by a train northeast of Emporia well before sunrise on Tuesday. Julio Flores has more. Lyon County deputies at Emporia Fire EMS initially responded to roads 200 and R about five miles east-northwest of Emporia around 3.50 a.m. after a report of a train striking a vehicle. Further investigation confirmed the victim was walking along the track somewhere between roads 190 and 200. The victim's name has not been released. I'm Lou Flores. A group of linemen from Pratt are on their way to Florida to help restore power after anticipated outages with Hurricane Milton. The powerful storm is making landfall today near Tampa Bay, an area of over 3 million people. Five linemen from the city of Pratt will move into the area after the storm has moved on. A separate Kansas task force went to the Carolinas at the end of September after Hurricane Helene. And the groups are remaining in the hurricane-ravaged areas for one to two weeks. This is Kansas Information Network News. If you recently lost health coverage due to a life change, healthcare.gov is here for you. Like it was there for Marcus when he lost his job. And Keisha when she turned 26. And lost her parents' insurance. And Elena when she went off Medicaid. There are many other ways to qualify. Visit healthcare.gov today to see if you're eligible to enroll. Limited time to enroll. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Smokey the Bear. Then you know why Smokey tells you when he sees you passing through. Remember, please be careful. It's the least that you can do. Don't play with matches. Don't play with fire. After 80 years of learning his wildfire prevention tips, Smokey Bear lives within us all. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. And remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Good morning. I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. Election offices across Kansas are preparing for a busy few weeks ahead as polling places will soon be open for the November general election. During a Kansas security hearing on Tuesday, officials discussed election security with concerns of false claims, misinformation, and even threats to workers persisting. For election administrators, a lot happens behind the scenes to protect people's votes, and in most Kansas counties, elections are run by the county clerk's office. Earlier this year, the Kansas Secretary of State's office issued updated security regulations, including the need for controlled access to the room where voting equipment is stored, saying access must be logged and at no time should only one person be needed inside the facility. And the room needs video monitoring and up-to-date inventories of equipment, including recording uses and repairs. The regulations reiterate that the computer used to tabulate results must be unable to access the Internet, and it's only for that purpose, per the Kansas state law. The Secretary of State's Office Director of Elections, Brian Kasky, said it has to be all by itself in a room that's secured, locked, and monitored, and the computer can't be accessed unless given explicit permission. The Secretary of State's office said it works closely with state and federal partners to receive updates on local and national threats. And since last fall, the Secretary of State's office has also provided more than a million dollars in grants to Kansas counties for controlled access equipment, cameras, and enhanced security measures for election offices. On Tuesday, Governor Kelly announced that a virtual on-demand meeting is now available for Kansans who want to provide input on water issues in the state. The virtual meeting is part of a second round of local consult meetings to gather input on strategies to implement the 2022 Kansas Water Plan. Governor Kelly said these local consult meetings are critical to finding and implementing sustainable solutions to address Kansas's water concerns, and by hearing directly from Kansans, they can make further progress on the goals of the 2022 Kansas Water Plan. 
The recent in-person new virtual meetings build on the first round of local consult meetings that were held this summer, as well as regional advisory committee meetings, and the virtual meetings mirror the content from the eight in-person meetings held across the state in September. The content is offered on demand so people can participate at any time they'd like, and through the virtual meeting, Kansans will have the opportunity to provide feedback. The meetings will be available online until November 8th. Input collected from the virtual meeting will be summarized alongside the input gathered from the more than 500 people who attended the in-person meetings held in September. The local consult meetings are being held by the Kansas Water Office, Kansas Department of Agriculture, and Kansas Department of Health and Environment, and questions can be emailed to kwo info at kwo.ks.gov. For more information on the Kansas Water Plan and the virtual meetings, you can visit kwo.ks.gov. Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of Commerce David Tolan encourages job seekers and employers who are searching for talent to participate in the virtual job fair that's hosted by Kansas Works that takes place next week. The job fair will be held from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day starting Monday, October 14th and ending on Friday, October 18th. Tolan said as the holidays are approaching, that means businesses are needing additional hardworking staff to keep up with the upcoming busy seasons. So whether you're looking for a seasonal or permanent role, there are plenty of options for full-time and part-time positions all across the state. The virtual statewide job fair portal features helpful information such as a job seeker training video, a list of participating employers and channels for attendees to register and log in, and job seekers are encouraged to dress professionally as employers might request to engage in a video interview. Candidates can participate through any digital device and any individual with a disability can request accommodations by contacting their nearest workforce center at 877 509-6757 prior to the event. Registration is required to participate in virtual job fairs regardless of your previous participation and for more information and to register you can visit kansasworks.com. In Nebraska news, the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services has reported two recent deaths in the central Nebraska region that have been attributed to West Nile virus. And in the last five years, Nebraska has seen an average of six West Nile virus deaths per year. West Nile virus can occur in people of any age. However, people over 50 years of age or older or with compromised immune systems are at the greatest risk for severe illness. Mild signs or symptoms can include fever, headache, body aches, skin rash, and swollen lymph node glands. Severe signs or symptoms can include high fever, headache, neck stiffness, stupor, disorientation, coma, tremors, occasional convulsions, and paralysis. There are no vaccines or medicines to prevent or treat West Nile virus in people. However, fortunately, most people infected with West Nile virus do not feel sick. Approximately one in five people who are infected develop a fever and other symptoms, and approximately one out of 150 infected people develop a serious, sometimes fatal, illness. The Department for Health and Human Services encourages Nebraskans to take preventative steps to fight the bite and avoid mosquito bites. And for more information about West Nile virus and risk reduction, you can visit dhhs.ne.gov. The Red Will County Jail sits empty while prisoners are still being sent to North Platte even after the repairs that were made to the 24-bed facility have been completed. In August 2024, Red Willow County began sending inmates to North Platte due to deteriorating conditions in the Red Willow County Jail, which was built in 2014 and funded with a $5.1 million bond. Rust in the shower areas of 16 modular cells caught the attention of the Nebraska Jail Standards Board, rendering the jail uninhabitable. So the facility was evacuated, and while repairs were completed in just three weeks, the jail remained empty for another three weeks due to caustic fumes from materials used during the process and limited ventilation. The jail is now ready for use. However, the county continues to send inmates to North Platte at a daily cost of $50 to $65 because of inadequate staffing. Staffing was a key topic of discussion on Monday when Red Willow County Sheriff Kevin Darling introduced newly hired jail administrator Serge Yaboa at a meeting of the Red Willow County Board of Commissioners. Yaboa, a native of the Ivory Coast with a bachelor's degree from Kennesaw State University, is fluent in English and French, and he's been working as a caseworker at the McCook Work Ethic Camp and identified recruitment of staff as his top priority. 
Yaboa's efforts to fill eight jail staff positions and attract applicants for unfilled sheriff's deputy roles will include attending local job fairs and appearing at Walmart this weekend, and details of those efforts will be announced when they become available. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. A 16-year-old high school student died early Saturday morning in a one-vehicle accident in Ellis County. The Ellis County Sheriff's Office reported that four teenagers were in a vehicle going east on Spring Hill Road near 230th Avenue, southwest of Hayes, at around 12.30 a.m. when the vehicle left the road and rolled, ejecting the 16-year-old boy. The Sheriff's Office said the boy was not wearing a seatbelt and he was pronounced dead at the scene. Another passenger was transported to the emergency room and was treated and released. And the sheriff's office said the accident is under investigation and that alcohol is suspected to be involved, though deputies are waiting for lab reports. A 50-year-old man was killed in a separate accident in Ellis County on Monday morning. Rick Grecian was driving east on I-70 near mile marker 161 when he lost control of his vehicle and went into the median, striking a drainage grate and causing the vehicle to roll. Grecian was not wearing a seatbelt and was ejected. He was taken to the hospital where he died. As Kansas officials, foster care service providers and advocates work to improve a system with a checkered past, new initiatives bring optimism for kids who have historically been left behind. According to data from the Kansas Department for Children and Families, the fewest number of children entered the state's foster care system in 2023 since 2006. However, older and disabled youth in the system have been left without a permanent place to live at a higher rate than their peers. The state and foster care service providers are seeking to remedy the disparity in several ways, and two solutions are in the early stages. In 2023, lawmakers directed $6 million from the state general fund towards developing a more comprehensive cachet of therapeutic family foster homes, And in March, the Department for Children and Families began to disperse about $4.7 million of that across seven agencies. Therapeutic foster homes provide 24-7 care and involve a child's family or prospective family in the child's services and schedule. Next, the Kansas foster care system struggles with permanency, which refers to the idea of foster children having a stable place to stay long term, as Kansas foster kids move at a rate of 7.3 times in a 1,000-day period compared to the federal performance measure of 4.8 times. That rate could change once the sole family legal permanency option, which was born out of House Bill 2536, is implemented. Governor Kelly signed the bill into law in April, adding a new first-in-the-nation option for foster kids 16 years of age and older. And Department for Children and Family Secretary Laura Howard said the department is prepared to implement the sole family option, though no youth have been formally identified as of yet. October is National Disability Employment Awareness Month, a time to educate about disability employment issues and celebrate the many contributions of workers with disabilities. And the Kansas Department of Health and Environment is dedicated to fostering employment opportunities for individuals with disabilities while helping participants gain and maintain meaningful employment. Kansas Department of Health and Environment Secretary Janet Stanick said the Kansas Department of Health and Environment is proud to recognize and honor the contributions that individuals living with disabilities are making in our state. And like other populations, those with disabilities make up a wonderfully diverse group of individuals. She said the Kansas Department of Health and Environment is providing important resources and programs to help ensure everyone has the ability to earn more, save more, and achieve their goals. For more information on working healthy, you can visit cancare.ks.gov. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll be having potato boats, baked beans, fruit cocktail, whole wheat roll, and milk. For Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be chicken fajita or hamburger with fruit and milk. And for Northern Valley Schools, your lunch today will be Parmesan chicken, roll, vegetable, and fruit. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. 
You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQ and K weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 88 and a south wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. For tonight, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 44 and an east wind around 5 miles per hour, which should become west after midnight. On Thursday, it should be sunny with a high near 89 with a calm wind becoming southeast around 5 miles per hour in the afternoon. And on Thursday night, it should be partly cloudy with a low around 53. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you've got bugs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock them Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton, at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, on Friday it should be sunny with a high near 83. On Saturday, mostly sunny with a high near 82. On Sunday, mostly sunny with a high near 66. On Monday, Columbus Day, there should be widespread frost. Otherwise, it'll be sunny with a high near 60. And on Tuesday, widespread frost. Otherwise, it'll be sunny with a high near 58. Currently, with fair skies, it is 45 degrees. The humidity is 87%. The wind speed is west at 6 miles per hour. The barometric pressure is 30.08. The dew point is 41 degrees. And the current wind chill is 42 degrees. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 8:19. It's time for Kansas Sports. That's being brought to you by United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything they do, they do for you. Save more, earn more with the Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union. Enrollment in this program automatically rounds up the amount of all debit card and share draft purchases made from your checking account to the next whole dollar and deposits into the Easy Saver savings account. Not only will this account help you save, but it also earns 2.01% APY monthly. Special terms and conditions apply. Come in today and open your Easy Saver account at the United Northwest Federal Credit Union, where everything we do, we do for you. NCUA insured. KIN Sports, I'm Spencer Dubuy. The Chiefs beat the Saints Monday night, and Juju Smith-Schuster looked like vintage Juju as he had seven catches for 130 yards. After the game, he talked about coming back to KC and what it has meant to him. And coming back here is, you know, a place I'm very familiar with, playing with a great quarterback that, you know, I've had chemistry in the past, playing under Andy Reid and the guys, you know, on the field uh, from my tight ends, O-lines, running backs, a receiver. You know, this is a team sport. Uh, it takes all 11 guys, you know, for us to, to make one play happen. He then talked about how head coach Andy Reid has made him successful after being after being cut by the Patriots. He just knows how to put guys in position. Uh, he, he knows how to basically use their strength on the field, and he exposes that. And I think that's something that, you know, being here, I was able to do that. And, and like I said, I'm just super blessed. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. The Chiefs have a bye this week before they take on the 49ers in two Sundays. Kansas Information Network Sports. I'm Spencer Dupont. As veterans, we're no strangers to helping others. It's what we were taught, trained, and told to do. It could be for anything. Helping a friend move. Listening to a fellow veteran for hours at any hour of the day. Or just simply making time for people. A neighbor, a loved one, or even a stranger. We're often the first to help others. There's no question about it. But we do have one question for the veterans listening. When was the last time you reached out for help? Perhaps it's time to do for yourself what you would do for others. If you or someone you know needs resources, whether it's for stress, finances, employment, or mental health, don't wait. Reach out. Find more information at va.gov reach. That's va.gov reach. Brought to you by the United States Department of Veterans Affairs and the Ad Council.
It's true, many of us spend more time thinking about what's for dinner than preparing for retirement. But if you think your retirement needs deserve more attention, I agree, and I'd like to help. I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Philip Eisenhagen. Together we can give your long-term retirement strategy the attention it deserves. Stop by our office at 418 East Holm here in Norton or call 877-3373. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC.